Since my last video on Unity 2018.3 Physics, I've received a lot of questions on how to make a trajectory system. As you might already know, I also made Unity's official YouTube video on Physics 3.4.2, which is the upgraded version. And in there, we did have a trajectory demo with a pool table, so a lot of people were asking me from there too. So I decided, you know what? I'm gonna make a video covering on how to make a trajectory system my own way. Um, I, I actually learned quite a lot, to be honest. So in this video, we're gonna make this trajectory system using the brand new multiple physics scene feature in physics 3.4.2. Honestly, the concept for this demo is pretty simple. You just hold down the left mouse button, you charge the arrow or the bow, and you just let go and it shows the trajectory and stuff like that. So it's a kind of simple, you know, idea. The principle is good, but the way of making it is actually insane. And I feel like it's, I mean, you know, it's a advanced feature, obviously, but it's not like a beginner thing, but it's also at the same time kind of mesmerizing how advanced it is. <laughs> so we're gonna get started with this, but before we do, I just want to mention that this video is brought to you all by Codeer Studio. <laughs> I love that name. Codeer Studio makes Unity assets and publishes them on the asset store. Some of its assets include the RTS Battle Kit, which is a complete real-time battle kit. You can use it to set up cool battles and let players deploy, select, and move several different units in real time. It automatically spawns AI enemies who will battle your troops and try to destroy your castles. He's also published some other kits like the Archer Game Kit, which is a tower defense game kit you can use to make tower defense games very quickly. And as always, I'm going to leave some links to him and his assets in the description, so make sure to check him out. And I would also like to give a huge shout out to all our Patreons for this month, Richard Stance, Glassville Entertainment, Cupola, Flu Joey, AcademyofGames.com, TerrorRift.com, John Funnel Grid, Couch Ferret, and Beard or Die. Thanks to your support on Patreon, I'm able to make more videos. It's kind of funny because I was gonna transition this video by saying the same thing I did in my last physics video. So now with that being said, let's jump into the video. Yeah, jump, like, get it? Cause it's a physics video, like, but then I remembered this comment on that video. <laughs> I was hovering my mouse on the unsubscribe button when you made that jump joke. <laughs> Come on, he wasn't a bad joke, come on. I mean, anyway, let's, I don't know what to say else than jump, but get into Unity, I don't know. All right, so here we are in Unity and I have an environment asset that I'm using and also an asset for the character, which I'm going to link in the description if you guys wanna check it out. So the player is, basically I created a folder called tutorial and in here I have the player already set up and I already have a reference arrow game object too, which I'm gonna explain in just a little bit. But we're gonna get started by dragging and dropping this player into our scene. And as you can see, it's uh, she's a, um, um, it's a nice looking lady. Now it doesn't really matter what character you're using, but basically I have a spine controller for her. It rotates her spine a little bit depending on where I look with the mouse. And I'm going to include that script in the description if you guys wanna have it. But so all we're gonna do here is we're gonna unfold all the way down to her hand, her right hand, and we're gonna drag and drop the reference arrow in here. And you can size and rotate this as you wish to. I think this is good looking. And now when we play the game, you can see that it follows the spine movement too. And now I'm going to create a couple of new scripts in the tutorial folder so the first one is going to be called shoot trajectory and the second one is going to be called arrow so i'm going to add shoot trajectory onto our player and the arrow component to our reference arrow so let me browse there and just drag and drop the arrow script and now let's go ahead and open up both of the scripts and first in shoot trajectory i'm going to remove these lines and i'm going to enter the arrow component and do the same thing here so now in the shoot trajectory component we're going to add a new library here so we're going to say using unity engine dot scene management and then we're gonna start by creating a couple of new lines here so that we can add some variables now the first variable is gonna be public static bool charging and then a public game object arrow public transform reference arrow actually let me have a capital A there and a private scene main scene private scene physics scene public game object marker and we're also going to have a private list of game objects and this one is going to be called markers so plural and we're going to have equal to new list game object now i'm going to go to the top of this public class that we have actually outside of it and we're going to create a public struct 
registered arrows. And in here, we're gonna have a public arrow real and a public arrow hidden. And going back to my class, I'm going to add a new private dictionary. And this is gonna be a string and derived from registered arrows. And the dictionary is gonna be called all arrows. And it's gonna be equal to new dictionary string registered arrows. And we can also have a public game object objects to spawn. There we go. So in our shoot trajectory class, we're going to get started by creating some new functions. And I just want you guys to follow with me on creation of these functions. Then we're going to follow up and see what exactly each one of them do. So first and foremost, let's create a void start and then a void fixed update. And then jump a few lines down and create public void register arrow. And in this, we're going to have arrow arrow. So we're referring to the component arrow as a parameter. Then we're going to have a public void prepare physics scene and then public void create movement markers, public void show trajectory, and finally public void sync arrows. Now I know we have a few, you know, to work with here, but don't worry. These are actually super easy to get around as soon as you learn. And I want to create as many voids as possible because in this tutorial, I kind of want to advance myself to beginners as well as intermediate programmers. So I want to showcase how you can do exactly each one of these functions per se. So going back to void start, we're going to say physics dot auto simulation equal to false. So we're going to control manually the simulation of physics in the scene. And then we're going to say main scene equal to scene manager dot get active scene and physics scene equal to scene manager dot create scene. And inside of these codes, we're going to give it a name so we can say physics scene. And then outside of the quotes, we're going to say comma new create scene parameters in parentheses local physics mode dot physics 3D. So this is going to create a new scene called physics scene and it's going to use the physics 3D mode in Unity. And then we're going to say prepare physics scene. Now let's go to fixed update and say if input dot get mouse button zero show trajectory. And then say main scene dot get physics scene dot simulate in parentheses time dot fix delta time. So we're going to be checking if the player is holding down the mouse button, the left mouse button. And in case they are, then we're going to show the trajectory. On top of that, we're also going to manually control and get the physics scene of this scene itself and then simulate it. So one thing that's really important when working with physics scenes is to make sure you can refer to the correct physics object in the hidden physics scene, right? Because you want to refer to it so you can actually control it. And in our case, we want to show it a trajectory. So we need to access it in order to see where it's going to travel and make sure that it travels before the arrow that we shoot with our player. So in register arrow, we're going to create a few if statements. First and foremost, we're going to say if exclamation point all arrows dot contains key in parentheses arrow dot game object dot name and if that's false because of the exclamation point at the start we're going to say all arrows square bracket arrow dot game object dot name equal to new registered arrows and don't forget about the parentheses and then we're going to say variable arrows equal to all arrows square brackets arrow dot game object dot name and then we're going to say if string dot compare arrow dot game object dot scene dot name comma physics scene dot name and outside of this parentheses we're going to say equal to zero because this is an if statement and if that's true then we're going to say arrows dot hidden equal to arrow and we're going to jump a line down and say else so if it's not actually comparable then we're going to say arrows dot real equal to arrow and then a couple lines below this, we're going to say all arrows square bracket arrow dot game object dot name equal to arrows. I know this might look a little bit crazy, but let's actually go over this real quick. So first and foremost, we're checking our dictionary all arrows that we created in the variable section. And we're checking to see if it contains a key, basically an item that is the same as the game object's name right now, which is why we're saying arrow game object name. If it is, then we're registering the all arrows arrow game object name, basically the current arrow that is relevant as a new registered arrow. And then we're comparing the two arrow scene names, basically here arrow game object scene name and physics scene name to see if they're the same that way we can see if the arrow is the hidden arrow so in the physics scene or if it's the real arrow basically the one that the player is playing with so we are now going to go to the arrow component and in here we're going to create a public bool is static and a public bool is reference 
and then we're gonna create a void start and we're gonna check if is reference and if this game object this arrow is reference then we're gonna say variable shoot script equal to find object of type shoot so it's automatically going to say shoot trajectory if you have IntelliSense activated in Visual Studio. And then we're going to say shoot script dot register arrow this. So we're just basically referring to the shoot trajectory component that we just worked on. And reference is the boolean we're using to detect if this game object, this arrow right now, is only for reference and not the one that the player is actually going to shoot. Going back to the shoot trajectory script, we're going to go to public void prepare physics scene. And in here, we're first and foremost going to say scene manager dot set active scene physics scene. So we're basically telling Unity, hey, enter us into the physics scene because we're going to play around in there. And then we're going to say game object G is equal to game object dot instantiate in parentheses objects to spawn. And we're going to say G dot transform dot name equal to reference arrow. And we're also going to say G dot get component arrow dot is reference is equal to true. Then we're going to destroy in parentheses G dot get component mesh renderer. And then finally, we're going to say scene manager dot set active scene main scene. So basically, we're entering the physics scene and finally exiting the physics scene by going to the main scene right here. And this is a good demonstration of how you can enter and exit the physics scene or when you're playing with multiple physics scenes. So this is one way to do it. And now we're going to create movement markers. So the trajectory itself. So in this void, we're going to have a for each loop and we're going to say variable arrow type in all arrows, which is the dictionary that we created with the variables. And then we're going to say variable arrows equal to arrow type dot value. And we're going to create an instance of the arrow script. So we're going to say arrow hidden is equal to arrows dot hidden. And here we're going to say game object G is equal to game object dot instantiate. And in here we're going to say marker because that's what we're spawning. We're going to spawn it at the hidden dot transform dot position and it's going to have the same rotation. And one thing I always do is I play with the scale. So I say G dot transform dot local scale is equal to new vector three in parentheses 0.3F by 0.3F by 0.3F. And finally, we're going to say markers dot add G so that we can add it into our list. And now we're going to deal with showing the trajectory itself. So we're going to say first and foremost sync arrows and then we're going to say all arrows square brackets quote marks reference arrow which is the name of the arrow we're trying to access dot hidden dot transform dot rotation is equal to reference arrow dot transform dot rotation and this is another way of accessing the hidden objects simply by using a dictionary storing them by registering them and then referring to them using the dictionary name itself and then having square brackets quote marks and the name of the object and then at the end you can also add hidden which is to make sure that we're referring to the hidden game object and don't forget that hidden is the public arrow component instance that we created in our struct so now one thing i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this part so hidden dot jump a line down and paste it and here i'm gonna say get component rigid body dot velocity is equal to reference arrow dot transform dot transform direction in parentheses vector 3 dot up times 15 and we're gonna jump one more line down copy all the way until rigid body dot paste it and say use gravity equal to true and then we're going to create an integer steps which is going to be equal to integer in parentheses 2f divided by time dot fixed delta time and finally we're going to have a for loop and say integer i equal to zero i lower than steps i plus plus and in this for loop we're going to say physics scene dot get physics scene dot simulate time dot fixed delta time and finally, we're going to say create movement markers. And now we're going to hop over to sync arrows. And for that, I'm actually going to copy for each loop that we created for create movement markers and then paste it in here. And in here, we're going to have variable arrows equal to arrow type dot value, arrow visual equal to arrows dot real, and then arrow hidden equal to arrows dot hidden. So we're just creating a couple of instances of the arrow component. And then we're going to have variable RB is equal to hidden dot get component rigid body. Then we're going to set RB dot velocity equal to vector three dot zero and RB dot angular velocity 
equal to vector 3.0. And finally, we're going to say hidden.transform.position equal to visual.transform.position. And then I'm going to jump a line down, copy this whole line, paste it below and change position to rotation and do the same thing over here. There we go. So we're basically just synchronizing the arrow in the physics scene with the reference arrow in the real scene. So now going back to Unity, I'm going to assign all of these fields that we just created. But first things first, I just want to rename this reference arrow prefab to shooting arrow just to skip confusion. And now for the arrow field, I'm going to drag in the shooting arrow that we just renamed. For reference arrow, I'm going to drag in the game object reference arrow that we added to the player at the start of this video. For marker, we're basically going to create a new 3D object, which is going to be a sphere. I'm just going to reposition this and rescale it a little bit. And we're going to rename this to marker. And we're going to drag this into the tutorial folder so that we create a prefab out of it. And I'm now going to remove the marker from the hierarchy, go back to the player game object and finally drag in the marker game object in the field and now objects to spawn i'm going to drag in the reference arrow once again now just a disclaimer you can actually drag in any object you wish to or any objects you wish to you can even have a an array of objects you wish to spawn in in the physics scene i only need the reference arrow right now in the physics scene because that's the only thing we're really adding physics to so i don't need anything else but you can add as many objects as possible or as you want to <laughs> so now i'm gonna go to the reference arrow in our player and make sure we check the is reference boolean here now luckily unity is smarter than me and it's warning me that there is no rigid body attached to the reference arrow so we're gonna go ahead and do that so in the tutorials folder i'm gonna go to shooting arrow open prefab add component and we're gonna add a rigid body component and now we can go back out of the prefab mode and we can go to the reference arrow game object and you can see that the rigid body is now added here as well and we can also disable use gravity with this and then right click on use gravity and apply to prefab shooting arrow and now if you play the game and hold down the left mouse button button you can see all these trajectories created you can also press once obviously that's also going to work fine however if you hold down your mouse button and move around you can see you you'll realize quickly that it kind of lags a little bit actually not even a little bit my pc is freezing <laughs> but that is because we're spawning so many instances of these markers now one way to solve this is by removing the markers every now and then so one thing i do is i usually just detect for whenever the player moves again so so that i can actually remove the markers so let me actually show you guys how i do that so in the shoot trajectory script this is very easy by the way we're just going to jump a couple lines down from public void sync arrows and we're going to create a public void clear trajectory and in this function we're going to have a for each loop we're going to say variable geo in markers and in this for each loop we're going to say destroy geo and then finally, we're going to say markers.clear so that we clear the list as well. So what I usually do is I just clear trajectory from show trajectory because show trajectory is called basically every frame once we're holding down the left mouse button, right? So we can just say clear trajectory. And now once we play the game and we move around, you can see that the lag is decreased and now the markers are much more accurate. All right, so that should give you an idea of how the multiple physics scene work in Unity and how you can use them to create a trajectory system. If you guys enjoyed watching this video and want to see more, make sure to give it a thumbs up to show some support and hit the subscribe button below the video and turn on that bell notification so you make sure you get notified and stay up to tune with the videos. We're going to have a bunch of new cool content, including Unity tutorials like this one, so make sure to stay up to tune. Also, if you haven't joined yet, we have a Discord server which you can reach by going to discord.gg forward slash polyrealm. It's a game development server with over 10,000 members at this point. Finally, I can get the number right. <laughs> First time it happens. And we're basically a community of like-minded people and a bunch of like-minded people, 10,000 at this point. And we like to chat, meme, meme a lot, to be honest, <laughs> talk about game development, run game jams, other events in the community. And it's basically a community specifically for this channel, but also at the same time, its own thing. So we're a game dev server. If you want to join that, once again, discord.gg forward slash polyrealm, or you can go to the link in the description. Now, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. I'll be active in the comment section and in our Discord server, so I'm looking forward to see you guys there. Thanks for watching and peace out. Party tune,